Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome back to Joyful Habits. This is Bethany. Man, it feels good to be back. I had planned to have this video up much sooner, but I fell suddenly ill and was bedridden for like an entire week. And even now, I'm not quite myself. Uh, you might notice my voice is a bit off. So yeah, that really threw me for a loop and messed up a lot of my plans. But right now, I'm just grateful to be out of bed and healthy again and just trying to figure out a routine and get back to work and life and YouTube. So yeah, that's what I've been up to the last week or two. Um, hopefully, you all have been having a healthier and happier uh, start to your Christmas season, but yeah, everyone, it's Christmas time. I love Christmas time so much and I'm very excited to spend an afternoon with you and make some gingerbread ornaments. I've made these ornaments many times. They are simple, they're cost-effective, customizable, and just so fun to make. So yeah, let's get started. Okay, so the basis for these ornaments is very simple. Just two ingredients applesauce and ground cinnamon. That's it. We're just going to combine them both in a mixing bowl and mix away. Side note, I really love these red measuring cups. I found these two years ago now, I think, at Hobby Lobby. I'll try and put a link in the description below in case anyone is interested. Now you'll notice I am adding you know, specific measurements and amounts of the applesauce and the cinnamon. But what I will say is that every year I end up following a different recipe for these ornaments that have different measurements for the applesauce and the cinnamon. And every year I end up having to add more cinnamon because it's too dry or add more applesauce because it's too wet. And I don't know if that's because I'm following the wrong recipes or if I'm just special in messing every single one up. But yeah, just don't be afraid to play around and add more or less of something until you get the right consistency. You don't want the dough to be too dry and crumbly because then your ornaments will fall apart. But you also need them to be the dough to be manageable and uh, not too wet or sticking everywhere, if that makes sense. Now, after I get everything pretty well mixed in, I just go in there with my hands and knead the dough and then start shaping it into a ball. And the dough is still a little wet, so I added some more cinnamon. As you can see, I'm just eyeballing it. I have no idea how much I just put in there. But hey, if it's too much cinnamon, I can just add more applesauce. <laughs> okay, so I think we finally have the dough where we want it to be. It's looking pretty good. It's at a good consistency. It's, it's nice and manageable. And so now we're going to roll it out and start cutting out our ornaments. Now, as I said, I've made these many times and I've used many different methods to roll out the dough, but, uh, you know, I've sprinkled cinnamon on the counter and on the rolling pin using the cinnamon like flour to roll everything out. I've put the dough between two pieces of wax paper and rolled it out that way. But honestly, the easiest, fastest, least messy way that I found is to take a large Ziploc bag and place the dough inside and then roll it out in the bag. This keeps everything contained, no mess, the dough doesn't stick to the counter or your rolling pin, it just makes everything easier and faster. Once I roll the dough out, I'm going to take some scissors and slice up two of the edges here. That way we can just lift it up and then put it back down. And again, it's just nice and easy. But speaking of these scissors, I just have to talk about them for a minute. I just recently found them. They were $7 and I love them. Not only are they like incredibly surprisingly sharp, because I'll be honest, I was kind of just getting them because they look pretty. 
but uh, they're actually very sharp. They're very practical and they're very pretty. And I was using them the other night when I was wrapping some Christmas gifts. It just made the whole process feel so much more whimsical and yeah, I don't know. They just feel like a pair of scissors you would find in Santa's workshop or something, you know, instead of like just boring, cold pair of scissors you'd find in an office. But anyway, I don't know. I love these scissors and I just love how they look. So I just wanted to say that. But anyway, back to the dough. I just grabbed some Christmas cookie cutters from the kitchen to cut out shapes in the dough for our ornaments just like you would for Christmas cookies and then we're just going to place them on a baking sheet either lined with parchment paper or if you have silicone um, a silicone baking mat that's what I'm using here I got these silicone mats years ago but I got them online so I'll try and put links in the description and I'll put links for the scissors too and just pretty much anything in this video I'll try to put links for in case you guys can't find it at a local store or you just prefer to do your shopping online or whatever. Now once you cut out a few cookies you just get the dough back together, roll it out again. Just keep doing that until you run out of dough and your baking sheet is full of little Christmas cookie ornaments. Now you'll see the bag can leave some creases and imprints on the dough, but I'll be honest, this is just a really, really old plastic bag that I've used over and over and over for various different crafts. So it, one, if you're using a new bag, it won't leave any marks, it won't have any creases in it. And um, honestly, even with my older bag <laughs> having all the creases in it, it really doesn't cause too much of a problem. It may leave an occasional line here and there in the dough, but if it does, I can just smooth it out. So yeah, it works. Anyway, <laughs> okay, and we now have a baking sheet full of Christmas cookie ornaments. And at this point, I just go through them all and neaten out the edges, fix any mistakes I see. Then the really important step here that I almost forget every time I make these we cannot forget to make the holes to string our ornaments before we bake them. I don't know why, but every time I make these, I come so close to forgetting and usually have to run into the kitchen and pull them out of the oven. I find using the end of a chopstick works really well here. You can also use a straw or even just a pointy pencil. The goal here is just to make sure that there is a hole big enough to put string or ribbon or yarn through it to string up your ornaments and hang them when they're done. So now when you're making the holes, make sure not to be too close to the edges or they might end up cracking and breaking. That's happened to me in the past. So I don't go to the very, very top. I try to be somewhat in the middle top of the ornament and that way there's enough dough around the hole that it's strong enough and it's not too thin, if that makes sense. And once you've neatened them up and you've made sure they all have holes, we're gonna throw them in the oven. We're gonna bake them at two and a half hours at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I believe that would be around 93 degrees Celsius and you're just gonna let them bake until they're completely dry but not burnt <laughs> even if you feel like they might still be a little damp I would err on the side of caution and just take them out and put them on a cooling rack and let them just kind of air dry because in the past I have burnt a few batches because I thought they were still a little too wet and so I'd leave them in there and then they got kind of black and charred so I find if I think they need a little longer, if I just pull them out and let them air dry, they'll be fine. So yeah, and once they're done, like I said, pull them out, let them cool, and you'll have something that looks like this. They came out so cute. I love making these ornaments. I've made them so many times, but I have fun with them every time. So really happy with how these guys came out. We've now reached the fun part, decorating. We are going to be using puffy paint, or I've also heard it called puff paint, 3D paint, 3D fabric paint, but anyway, you're looking for puff paint. What I really like about these bottles is that they have a very fine tip, 
so it makes it easier to decorate the ornaments and be more precise with your design. Now today I'm using the color white to look like white frosting, but you can get really creative here with any colors you want and even using like glitter or buttons or ribbon. Um, today I'm keeping it simple, but again, you can give like the gingerbread little buttons and maybe a scarf. I think that'd be really cute. But yeah, the possibilities are just endless. I really enjoy making these ornaments. And yeah, let's get decorating. As you can see while I was decorating the snowflake, one of the ends broke off, but what I did was once everything was dried, I just glued it back on and it was fine. Okay, so once you've decorated all your ornaments and let them dry, I let them dry overnight just to be sure everything was set. And now we are going to string them up so we can hang them on our trees. I like to use embroidery thread, ribbon, yarn, really whatever I have on hand. Today I'm using a mixture of a little bit of everything. Well everyone, that just about wraps it up for today's video. I really hope you all enjoyed hanging out with me and making some Christmas ornaments today. Thank you for being patient with me as I continue to heal and my voice slowly comes back. Hopefully my voice being off wasn't too distracting. As always though, I hope today has inspired you, taught you something new, or at least put a smile on your face. And I hope that whatever kind of Christmas season you're all having, that you find time to slow down and smile. I know that can be hard on normal days, but especially during the hustle and bustle of the holiday season. And I know I have a tendency to try and juggle too many things at once, and I tend to get burnt out and then disappointed in myself. Being in bed for a week really forced me to slow down, and I've decided that this Christmas season I'm not going to stress and try and do everything, I'm just going to take it slow and really enjoy the season. Like today, you know, taking an afternoon to make Christmas ornaments and listen to Christmas music, it was really relaxing and fun. Even just something simple like enjoying a Christmas film with no distractions. You know, put your phone away, don't fold the laundry, don't worry about your to-dos, don't think about your day at work, and 
just cuddle up with a fuzzy blanket, something warm to drink, maybe a snack, and just truly enjoy the film. Something else I really enjoy doing every year is setting aside a special time to wrap all my Christmas gifts. I try and make it an event. I'll light the fire and put on some Christmas music or put on a classic Christmas movie and dim the lights. So there's only the glow of the fire and the lights on the Christmas tree. Pour some cocoa, get all my wrapping materials, everything together, and just sprawl everything out on the floor or a large table. And then just enjoy a relaxing Christmassy evening uh, wrapping all my gifts. And I really enjoy being creative with how I wrap the gifts, making them pretty, or maybe wrapping something, you know, really small in a really big box to be funny. And just thinking about how surprised or happy each person will be when they see the gift I have for them. And I know a lot of people stress about wrapping gifts and treat it like a chore on their to-do list, but I really enjoy it and I enjoy it even more when I make it an event and I kind of look forward to it and just have fun. But anyway, whether you're having a jam-packed best Christmas ever, or a slower one, or perhaps just a different than others one, I hope whatever season of life this season is for you, that you find time and, and ways to slow down and, and smile and feel joy and feel love, because in the end that's what this season is about. And with that being said, my name is Bethany. And this has been Joyful Habits, where we daydream and add a touch of whimsy to the ordinary. I'll see you all very soon in my next video, and until then, keep smiling. Bye!